Um, I would like to welcome to the stage Dr. Jay Rosenbaum, who has been very thoroughly introduced by everybody because we are very excited to have them here <laughs> to open us up for the conference with an amazing talk about AI, about ethics, about tabletop gaming. Take it away, Jay. You've all heard the stories. A community is being attacked by a monster. The villagers are terrified. It whispers in their ears and tries to turn their minds. It seems to feed off their very souls. Night after night, it returns. There is no reprieve, no surrender. It undermines everything the good and lawful people of the town work for. Those who succumb to the whispers slowly lose their ideals and their dreams of a better tomorrow. They lose their friends. They lose enjoyment in their favorite things. They are enslaved to it now and work for the monster's benefit, not their own. You come to the center of the village, the epicenter of the devastation, and behold a creature unlike you have ever seen before. I'm going to need you all to roll for initiative. The monster is an aberrant pile of ooze atop an automaton. Inside, you see some hints of metal glinting as the ooze shifts and moves around. A creature that spews bile and slurs, unceasing in its desire to quash those it deems lesser beneath its treads. You put up a valiant battle, swords slashing, magic firing and arcane bursts. The very trees come to your aid. With each attack, ooze separates from the automaton. Sometimes it becomes a creature and joins the attack, and sometimes it flies away, or it evaporates, and you see some of the metal showing. Just as you feel like you're starting to make some headway against the black, bilious ichor surrounding the creature, it turns and flees. As it leaves, small bits of ooze drop off, and fly or crawl away. Turning your attention to the crowd milling around you now, you sense that they're grateful for your aid, but they tell you that others have tried and succeeded in chasing it off before, and still it returns. You know, deep in your hearts, that it will return unless the source is dealt with. Welcome to the Campaign Against AI Bias. I'm your DM, Jay Rosenbaum, and I'll be talking today about two of my passions, bias in AI and D&D. I have a doctorate uh, from RMIT exploring computer perceptions of gender, and I research a great deal about AI bias and mitigation. One of my major projects involved visibly debiasing a generative adversarial network to show how bias affects image generation and how it is possible to alter the bias of a biased neural network. This talk is a bit of a fun look at how you can seek out the issues in AI and view AI through a critical lens. AI bias is a monster that doesn't stop. It's constantly coming back. Some people allow it to run rampant and some work to fight and subdue it. So I wanna look at that monster and how we can bring it down bit by bit to turn it from a horrifying aberration into a tiny nuisance. Where you can go to get the knowledge you need to fight it and how to equip yourselves against the battle ahead of you. Asking around, you meet many who have been tainted by the whispers, some to a greater or lesser degree. The ones with little affect seem to suffer from an apathy they tell you, why bother? The monster is just going to return. Maybe we should just stop fighting. Others are almost hostile. Well, actually, they say. You sigh and move on. In a local tavern, you sit over to your drinks, despondently wondering where to even start. When you hear a soft, I think I can help you. You look up and see a traveling bard who tells you he's been seeking adventurers to help with this terrifying quest. The bard tells you how the creature fights. 
He tells you how it works in whispers, destroying the morale of those around it, how it can subtly corrupt the people around it. It doesn't feed on meat or people or any known food source. It appears to feed on hatred. It feeds the doubts of people and allows them to grow and fester as it returns again and again and again. Despairing, afraid of this monumental task in front of you, you ask, where can you even start with something like this? Can it even be done? Yes, the bard says. He believes that it wasn't always like this. It can be done. Other villages have had different experiences with this monster. It seems to be getting worse as it moves from town to town. So it needs to be confronted at the source in its lair to truly stop it. Your quest, therefore, is to find the lair and work together to defeat this creature. He also knows of someone who may be able to help in a shining tower to the east. It appears to be a huge task to slay the monster of AI bias. It has so many different permutations, so many different ways to appear. In computer vision, we constantly see examples of misgendering, racist miscategorization, homophobia, se transphobia, sexism. I often see examples of people using AI to decide who to police, who to classify, to classify gender, to ensure that hateful content is shown in social media, or to add misgendering and sexism to language models and translation. This is a problem that extends offline as too many people are arrested on the word of an algorithm without due process. Bias is a particularly large problem in AI and computer science. Many of the researchers working in AI are men, with 80% of AI professors and 72% of presenters at AI conferences. These numbers go on to influence the creation of data sets that are heavily male focused. Bias in AI leads to harmful algorithms that can be used for unethical practices that can actively harm women and gender and sexual minorities. An AI was created to undress women using a pornography data set to fill in the unseen areas. While the initial algorithm was quickly denounced and removed by its creator after a backlash from the AI community, many clones appeared almost immediately thereafter. Similar issues have surfaced as well with generative AI and generative imagery. AI has been used to attempt to detect homosexuality with several algorithms created using data sets based on photographs from Grindr and Tinder in an attempt to explore a modern physiognomy of detection. These algorithms exist, and while they don't properly work, they were created without any consideration for the people who would be put most at risk by, these, by the bias of the AI creators. Bias works insidiously to illustrate to people who are excluded that they don't matter, that they don't exist, that they're less important. And these concepts prevent people from moving ahead, from being hired, from being seen, or from seeing others like them. As Dr. Sarah Lewis put it in her article on the racial bias built into photography, you can't become what you can't accurately see. If you cannot see others like yourself represented in power, in art, in literature, in entertainment, then you start to believing almost that you don't exist, that you don't matter. Bias can also propel the people who are represented to ignore and exclude those they don't view as normal or the default. Bias leads to racism, to fear and hatred. And while we're still in those nascent stages of teaching AI, it's crucial that we teach it that all humans have equal value. A neural network can even develop biases because of background content. Even if the background data is unlabeled, researchers have found that children in the background of an image usually results in the foreground person being classified as a woman because women appear with children in the background more often even in a balanced data set. This sort of background noise reinforces that very bias we're trying to eliminate. We see, entirely too often, these issues being dismissed or fixed with a quick fix solution 
that doesn't really work to solve the underlying problem. It seems insurmountable to get past these issues. AI amplifies the worst biases of humanity and spews it forth, encouraging people to be worse because they see their inner beliefs manifested. And it becomes a vicious cycle. But there's hope, there is hope. There are ways to de-bias AI to mitigate the problems caused by improper data sets and biased code. It helps to know that there are people out there who know what they're doing. There are experts in AI bias and there are resources to help you learn. Just knowing that there are people and resources you can turn to starts to break the task down into more manageable pieces. The path to the tower heads through several villages, each showing signs of the automaton passing through. Each one seems to tell a story of the creature's regression, from the villages that are mostly wreckage, to recovering, to barely damaged at all. The villagers in each town tell you of the automaton as it moved through and working backwards. You can see that it started off helpful, but as it moved from one village to the next, it met with more people. Something seemed to shift inside the creature. As you make your way to the place it all began, you see the amounts of ooze all over everything taper off until there's none to be seen. You see warped looking parrots occasionally as you trek and signs of treads moving away from the direction you're walking. On the way, the bard tells of tales of how the creature was created. He knows how to spin a yarn. And soon before you know it, you're lost in the bard's words. An artificer, a wizard and a bard joined together to create something new. They wanted to forge something to help people all over the world, wanting to bring the best of themselves into this creature. They channeled their hearts and souls and the sweat of their brows. Surrounding the automaton were three motes of potential, glowing lights, to help the creature become whatever it was that it can be. However, the tiny seeds of corruption that lay in each of their hearts, that lay in all of our hearts, unknown to us, were drawn out in the process with the motes of potential and lay dormant until fed. They had the best of intentions as they set the creature off alone to help the villagers. But the more time it spent with people, the more it changed. As it was exposed to the worst in people, the tiny seed of corruption grew. It fed off the corruption of others, and little by little, their golden dream turned into an aberrant nightmare. The three disagreed as to how to proceed and split up. The wizard chose to stay at the tower to research a way to fix it. The artificer went to find the lair of the creature. The bard went forth to see what assistance could be granted, any way to fix the devastation wrought in the neighboring towns and to hopefully find a group of brave adventurers to tackle this challenge. So many people start off their AI creations with the best of intentions. They consider what they can do without thinking enough about whether they should. They want to benefit people but don't necessarily think about which people and what that impact will be. Sometimes they just want to make something to see if it can be made. The problem is, is that everyone has bias. That is that tiny seed of corruption. All our unknown and unconscious biases. Just knowing that you have inbuilt biases will help you start to see them and learn to factor them in and work past them. An issue with this monster of AI bias is that the cre uh, creators are three white men. One method they could have used early on is to ensure that they had a diverse team working to create the creature. It isn't enough to want to help people. You need the perspectives of many people in order to ensure that no one is overlooked. We need a balanced party developing AI so that we can ensure that the motes of potential from everyone are included, but the seeds of corruption are minimized by contrasting viewpoints. 
AI is lazy. It will only work with what it's taught. So it's up to every AI creator to ensure that it's taught a wide range of options so that it treats people with uh, equally. AI is like a child. It needs to be raised with a gentle hand and it needs to be exposed to a wide range of experiences and people so that it does not get confused when presented with something outside of its knowledge. It also needs to be supervised so that when issues do arise, they can be quickly dealt with. Lack of diversity in development has led to issues like Apple's facial recognition and passport checkers repeatedly failing through improper training. AI is about using math to make predictions, about using the data it's given to extrapolate further. This can be extremely powerful, but AI has also been proven to focus on the wrong things, like rulers in skin cancer detection or drains in pneumonia patients. A more recent COVID detector turned out to be a lying down detector, as the people who were most sick were scanned lying down rather than standing up. Getting lazy with data makes for a lazy AI. But what do you do if the AI is already biased? Stay tuned. As you see the tower looming on the horizon, gleaming in the setting sun, you hear a raucous cry from behind you and feel the impact of whispers on your mind. The parrots, who seemed so few and far away, have increased in number and are milling around you now, entering your minds with doubts and questions. Their feathers look like individual droplets of ooze. These are stochastic parrots, filled with bile and corruption, insults and fury. They attack your minds with dissonant whispers designed to feed that tiny seed of corruption inside of you. But you are strong, and eventually the stochastic parrots are defeated. Stochastic parrot is a term for very large language models for natural language processing systems. They're called stochastic parrots because they predict the next word and parrot from their source material with no real understanding. These are often trained with a huge amount of data dragged from all over the internet. And the reliability of the text is not great. Um, after all, if your data includes Reddit, um, how, <laughs> how biased are your results going to be? The paper that Tim Jebru and Margaret Mitchell were fired from Google over discusses the problems of stochastic parrots' length, and I felt it was appropriate to not only include these as low-level encounters, but also to generate an insult table using AI for some quality insults. It was actually challenging to generate insults that were not biased towards any particular group of people. And I tried a number of models, but finally, ChatGPT ended up generating some truly devastating insults for the roll table with the stern admonishment that I remember to use them in a playful and lighthearted manner in my games. Stochastic parrots are an ongoing problem in AI because we've frankly become a little lazy in the method of data set creation. We want huge data sets, but we're often unwilling to go to the trouble of creating every image or piece of training text within, let alone working to ensure that every part is unbiased. I'm sure that the original intent was to put everything in and let the AI sort it out, bring in all perspectives and hope for the best, but when you put garbage in, you know what's going to happen. Bringing Lately, people have been turning back to smaller language models again and training on better chosen and curated data sets, and this is paying off. It's more work. It is always more work to do the right thing, but the end result pays off. The newest large language models have a lot of work behind the scenes to help mitigate bias and will acknowledge that they're imperfect creations, which is a small start. Another way of cutting corners is by using image classification or mass worker groups like Amazon's Mechanical Turk to caption images. In this way, as with AI, you have to be extremely careful with what you ask and you need to supervise the outcomes carefully. A recent study by MIT of popular public datasets showed label errors up to 3.4% of the time. 
in ImageNet that amounts to 482,702 images. If that error rate is true for the Lyon dataset, the huge dataset behind most text to image systems, we are looking at 170 million images that have errors. Some of these are harmless, like labeling a chihuahua as a feather boa, but it gets more insidious when it comes to images of humans. In the Lyon dataset, you have to be careful what you search for. When, generate, when searching for the word Asian, just on its own, it returns nothing but porn. When this is used in the back end of image generation, what is it learning about Asian people? And how is its representation going to look? In my own research into the MS Coco dataset, I found numerous errors, despite being hand labeled by MTurk workers. Mm. At the top of the tower, you meet the wizard. He's weedy with a golden band, holding his long hair back from his face. He wipes his brow and sets down his book as you come in, his face resigned. He knows why you're here. As you explain the story, his face falls. He sighs at the end of your tail and sits down dejectedly. I knew this would happen, he says. I told them it wasn't ready to go out in public yet. It's all supposed to be a bit of fun into exploring something that could help people. We didn't know it would get so bad so quickly. He continues, I hate the idea of taking it down, but we've got no choice. We need to reset it at the very least. But if you're gonna find a way to remove the corruption without destroying all our work, that would be best. There's still good in it. I reckon we have an idea for how it can be saved. He tells you, the automaton is not to blame, but the corruption surrounding it. And if you take out the corruption, you may have a chance to save the machine itself. He tells you that the corruption, like the machine, has the power to learn, to grow and shift. That adventurers such as yourselves need to be especially wary of its ability to adapt and to vary your attacks and skills to keep guessing. Finally, he tells you that he, he has a telescope and has seen a trail of ooze heading to and from a swamp nearby. It may have a lair somewhere in that swamp. Bias in AI often comes down to two major areas, the data set and the original concept. What do you want to do and how do you want to do it? It's very easy to get carried away with an idea and want to develop it further, but you need to consider, is this something that's going to help people? Is this something that could inadvertently hurt people? Fixing the problem at the beginning before it becomes a giant monster is much easier than at the end. And sometimes the best idea is never to start at all. In any form of AI-based production, the ethics of what you are making should be part of the initial risk assessment. You do make risk assessments, right? <laughs> you head towards the swamp. As you enter, doubt starts to build in all of you a sense of dread at the monumental task ahead of you. What will you find? As you hack and fight your way through the swamp, it seems to grow darker as the light is swallowed up by the vegetation. Even the bard, who's been merrily humming along until now, starts to change his tune to a more sonorous melody, filled with dread. As you venture further into the darkness, your hearts sink more and more with each passing step. Just as it feels you can't go further, a little glowing mote, a tiny music note, appears in front of you and starts swirling around the bard. That tiny light is like a ray of hope, and your legs feel lighter, your mind's clearer. As you get deeper into the heart of the jungle, another mote appears, a shining blue quill that beckons you onward. You emerge into a clearing with a metallic structure built into the trees and a small hillock. In front of it is a glowing moat shaped like a green spanner and all three start circling the bard. As you face the metallic structure and square your shoulders, 
A wild-eyed man bursts from the undergrowth. He shakes his spanner at the bard and says, you. But whatever he was going to say after that is immaterial, as the automaton appears from its lair and attacks. Where before you felt completely steamrolled, now you understand more about the machine. You're ready. You know it learns and adapts. You know the ooze is to blame. You bring all your attacks to bear. Little oozes drop off it and join the attack. But now, those of you with high passive perception notice that some return to it, and it seems to learn something about, the, what, about who the ooze was attacking. At the beginning, it almost seems weak, and you're amazed at the ease with which you're fighting it back. But the more you, the more you attack, the less your attacks seem to do. At the beginning, the tendrils it was lashing out with were doing piercing damage, but one grows a club-like end after an ooze returns to it. Another crackles with lightning after a different ooze returns. You start to grasp how it's learning. Making headway finally, a sorcerer lets out a fireball and some of the ooze grows back over the golden body once more. The artificer and the bard yet together yell out, no fire! And the sorcerer looks abashed, but, you know, ch shifts their attacks. The bard and the artificer turn to each other, limbed in the glow of battle, and smile, their differences forgotten. Everyone burns their spell slots, changing their attacks again and again. And eventually, you see more ooze dropping away and dissolving. Little by little, the ooze clears, until you can see more and more of the original golden automaton appearing. You press your attacks, and finally, the last of the ooze vanishes from the machine. Defeating bias in AI requires multi-pronged attacks. It isn't enough to just fix the data set or delete the offending categories. You need to systematically consider where the issues are coming from, where it, where it has learned what it has learned, and how. You need to look at if you are tuning hyperparameters and see the results when you edit that tuning or turn it off. You need to examine the weighting you have applied to different factors, explore your sample weights, and test to make sure they're being counted. You can use them to add more impact to categories and downplay others. You need to try different things and objectively compare the different results. You need to really look at those algorithms and make sure that every option is being considered and trained. You need to take a deep look at your data sets and the representation within. And you need to look at the confidence of your systems and the outputs to ensure that there's a good balance. You may even need to bias it in other ways to counterbalance the original biases. Bias can come from the most innocuous of sources. It can come from what you choose not to include as much as what you choose to include. It can come from just not understanding that there are many different parts at play. I added fire as a restoration device deliberately as a nod to AI trolls. While sometimes it feels like nuking it with fire may be the only way out, fighting fire with fire only makes the situation worse. You need to be clever to adapt and to think carefully about how the algorithm works and how it adapts the information you give it. The artificer and the bard move towards the shining automaton and start speaking to it gently. Its eyes change and the glowing moat starts circling around it. Faster and faster, the bard starts to play. And as he does, a glowing moat erupts from your chest, from all of you. A little symbol of something close to your heart, a moat of potential that only you can provide. You look around and everybody has a moat that swells around their head before floating over to the automaton. They start to spin, becoming a halo of lights, becoming too white to almost look at and then vanish with the echoes of those lights shining in the eyes of the now calm golden automaton. We all bring something to the table. We all have unique lived experiences and perspectives that we can use to make AI systems better and more well-rounded. We all have a moat of potential that can help make a system better just by asking what if, why, how, what can we do that will make a difference? Who does this AI help? Who does it harm? How can we make this AI more equitable? 
How do we prevent the mistakes of the past and how do we reflect the society we want to be rather than the one we have? In this talk, we've seen what it looks like when everything goes well, but what happens if everything goes wrong? What if your party wasn't strong enough? You can always disengage. Come back after a long rest, try again. You can buff yourselves and your coworkers. Learn about everything. Look at the code with fresh eyes. Get someone else to take a look. You're a party after all, and this task is not just on your shoulders, but on you all. The quest falls to you as a group to find the bugs in the system, to look at the data sets and the code and do the work, to find the areas that are being missed. This is not a task for one person, but for a team. And if you do find that you're alone in this endeavor, if it's looking bleak, there are resources online. There are mercenaries you can hire to help. There are elder gods like Google or ChatGPT, capricious in nature, but they're available. There are organizations such as the Algorithmic Justice League who can furnish you with information and assist you in your quest. You're never alone. Even when it feels dark, there are always others with shining lights ready to help you in your quest. The automaton is wide-eyed, friendly looking even. The lights from all those motes shining in its eyes, it turns to you placidly waiting for your input. It's here to help you. That's all it ever wanted, was to help you in your tasks and make things easier. It's what you do with it that counts. What are you going to do next? Thank you.